Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering a question from an IGCSE paper. Um, <clears throat> this is June 2022 from the Cambridge um, Paper 4, variant 10580 series. And this question here is um, about ratios and percentages. There's a few different things that are included in this. I'll just record it in one video and maybe um, put it in the playlists, different playlists for the different topics that are covered. But it's mainly about percentages. We start off, though, with ratios. It says, Alex, Bobby and Chris share strawberries in the ratio. Alex to Bobby to Chris, 3 to 2 to 2. Chris receives 12 strawberries. Calculate the total number of strawberries shared. Okay, so we've got to find the total amount of strawberries. So you've got Alex, Bobby, Chris, and it's 3 to 2 to 2. Now, we know that Chris has got 12 strawberries. So there's a few different ways of us finding the total. Uh, what we could do here is we could think about the fraction of the total that Chris receives, all right, which is basically, if you, th if you look at the parts, it's 3 to 2 to 2. So it's 3 plus 2 plus 2, which is 7 parts. So out of um, 7 parts, Chris receives 2 parts. So Chris receives 2 parts out of 7 of the total. We call the total x. Total number is x. And we know that that's equal to 12. That's one nice way of doing it. Um, so you have x equals, if you multiply both sides by 7 and divide both sides by 2, you end up with 7 times 6, which is 42. So there's 42 sweets altogether. Okay, so that's um, a nice easy way. We could also do it by understanding that basically to get from 2 to 12, you multiply by 6. So we could multiply each part of these ratios by 6. This is, of course, going to be 12 as well. And you multiply this by 6, it's going to be 18. So we have 18 plus 12 plus 12, which is going to be 30 plus 12, which is 42. You could do it that way as well. Different ways of doing it, whichever way you prefer, that's fine. Perfectly fine. Okay, so there's the answer to A, uh, to 2A. Now, 2B. <coughs> this is more about percentages now. It says, in a sale, a shop reduces all prices by 12%. Dina buys a book which has an original price of $6.50. Calculate how much Dina pays for the book. So you have here, um, this is the way I like to do these questions here, before and after. So we've got a sale. We have a price before the sale, which is what we know. That's the original price before the sale, £6.50. And after the sale is what we want to find, how much she paid for it. Okay, so the original price, the before price is always considered the normal price, 100%. Now, it's reduced by 12%. So the new price is going to be 100% minus 12%, which is going to be 88%. So here we write 88%. Okay, because it's, it's reduced by 12%. So the after price is 88% of the original price. So therefore, we can say X equals, this is going to be um, 6.5% times 88 divided by 100 and that should give us our answer so you have 6.5 multiplied by 88 divided by 100 and that gives us the answer which is 5.72 dollars 5.72 dollars that's how much dina paid for the book we could have also understood this by saying let's find 12 percent of 650 and take it away from 650 which would work or let's find 88% of 650, um, which will give us the same price. Now, then part two says, Elu pays $11 for a toy. Calculate the original price of the toy. So in this case, we know um, the sale price. We know that's $11 after the sale. And we want to find the price before the sale. The rest is the same. This is 100% the original price. And this is 88% the sale price. So if you want to find X in this case, you want to find the, 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 the price before, you're going to multiply 11 by 100 and divide by 88. So this will give you your answer. So you have 11, 11 multiplied by 100 and divided by 88, which gives you 25 over 2, which is 12.5. That's 12.5. So 12.5, you should put two decimal places for currency if it's not an integer so 12.50 that's the answer to this part two 
Okay, we could also have done this in another way. We could have said, okay, uh, we know that what the, um, the, the sale price is, is 88% of the original price. So 88 over 100 times original price, which you have to find, is equal to 11. So in, in this case, you have 11 equals, um, or sorry, x equals 11 times 100 over 88. You get the same answer, of course. Okay, so that's another way of doing it. Okay, so that's part two. Now, part C, now for part C, we're told, and this is actually the part of the question that was requested by someone for me to answer. It says, Ferry invests some money. The rate of interest for the first year is 2.5%, and the end, at the end of the second year, the overall percentage increase of Ferry's investment is 6.6%. Find the rate of interest for the second year. So for, for the first year, the, the interest rate was 2.5%. For the second year, we don't know what the interest rate was. But we know that overall, over the two years, the percentage increase in the investment was 6.6%. Okay, so this is something called compound, compound percentages. Compound percentages. All right, and we're used to this in a slightly different way. Now, if this question had said the rate of interest is 2.5% every year, um, you know, for two years, then we would say, okay, it's going to increase. So it's like 100% plus 2.5%, which is 102.5%, which as a decimal is 1.025. And if we had the original amount and we increased it over two years, you do 1.025 and we put to the power of 2. And the reason why you put to the power of 2 because you would have to basically do this. All right, you have to multiply it by itself because this was for the first year, this is for the second year. Now, in, in this case, the interest rate has changed in the second year. So I'm going to call this multiplying factor here X for the second year. All right, so it was increased and then there was another percentage, there was another interest rate for the second year. It wasn't the same as this. So I'll call that X and I know that this has caused the investment to increase overall. The, the com combination of this caused the investment to become the original investment times 6.6% more. So it's 100 plus 6.6%, which is 106.6%, which is 1.066, 1.066. So th this is equivalent to that. So I can say that the 1.025 times X must equal 1.066. Okay, so I can say 1.025 X equals 1.066. So X is going to be 1.066 divided by 1.025. So I have 1.066 over 1.025. And that gives you 26 over 25, which is 1.04. So we can say that that's 1.04. What does that represent? That represents 100% plus 4%. Okay, that's what was this. This is like 1.04 is like 104% which is 100% plus 4%, so that's the increase. It's a 4% increase. Okay, so that represents an overall percentage increase of 6.6% represents having an increase of 2.5% and then an increase of 6%, uh, sorry, 4% for the second year. Okay, so our understanding here is we need to have a good understanding of what's called compound percentages to answer part C. So I hope that was clear. That was a question that was actually asked. But I'll complete, complete the rest of the question just for those who might have um, some doubts about the other parts. So part D says a radioactive substance decays at an exponential rate of one point, oh, sorry, of 2% per day. The initial mass is 80 grams. Find the mass at the end of five days. So basically, it's a, it's a decay. So it's going down this time. It's not like the interest which goes up. This is going down. So it's 100% minus 2% every day, which is 98% which is a multiplying factor of 0 0.98 divided by 100, 0 0.98. So that's what you can call the, the multiplying factor. So if you take 0 0.98 and you raise it to the power of the number of days, which is 5, and you multiply it by the initial mass, which is 80, that will give you your final mass because it's going down by 2% um, every day. So every day it's going to be 98% of what it was the day before for 5 days altogether. Okay, at the end of five days. 
So end of the first day, that will be like to the power of one, end of the second day to the power of two, and so on and so forth. So end of the five days will be to the power of five. So you have 0 0.98 to the power of five times 80. And that gives you your answer, which is 72.313. Let me write this down, 72. 72.3136, it goes on. So we want to 3SF as we should normally round it unless otherwise stated. So 72.3 grams. And there's the answer for D part one. And D part two says, find how many more whole days, how many more in bold whole days, means more than those five days, it takes for the mass to reduce to less than 67 grams. So what we could do is we can do the same thing. Can 0 0.98... And we can say to the power of x times 80, and we're going to see what that gives us until we reach the amount we need. So here we've got to do some trial and error. There are some algebraic ways of doing it, but they're beyond the scope of IGCSE. So I'm going to teach you the way that is within your um, understanding and knowledge. So we, we try different, try, use trial and error. So of course, it's more than five days. So let's try, for example, 10 days. Just, just just, a random number. So 0 0.98 to the power of 10. When x equals 10, you end up with, okay, 0 0.81, or times 80, sorry, times 80, which gives you 65.36, okay? So when x equals 10, okay, um, then we end up with 0 0.98 to the power of 10 times 80 equals 65.37. Well, 65.37 it goes on so that's less than 67 but is is that the least number of days no let's let's try x equals 9 and see what that gives us so let's try x equals 9 i should have left that in there so 0 0.98 to the power of 9 times um 80 Okay, that looks like it's the one because it's just below it. So 0 0.98 to the power of 9 times 80 gives us something which is below 66.699. 66.699 continues. So that's below 67. You want to check and make sure if we put 8 here, we will see that it's too high. If we, if we use x equals 8, it's too high, for, of course. 0 0.98 to the power of 8 times 80. That gives us something which is above what we need that's the 68.061 so what we need is this one over here okay when x equals nine nine days so that's four days after nine so it's nine days okay which is so you have nine minus five which is four so it's four days after okay um after day five Four days after day five. Okay, so nine days in total, four days after day five. And there's the answer to part two. And that answers um, this whole question, question number two, from the June 2022 paper for variant one, Cambridge 0580 extended um, exam. Um, so other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist, which will appear in this region over here. Other questions from the topic of ratios and percentages from um, my uh, IGCSE work can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link and you can watch the video that appears here. In fact, in terms of, uh, the, you'll have a, a playlist here of percentages and a playlist here on ratios. I'll put separately, percentages and ratios separately. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on that link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.